the stomach. The stomach is organ lies in uh, the left hypochondrium, epigastrium, and upper part of the umbilical region. This is uh, the site of the stomach. In the left hypochondrium, mainly present in the epigastrium and extend to the upper part of umbilica region. What is the shape of the umbilicus? Actually, the shape of the umbilicus is variable. According to the size of the umbilicus, according to the length, of uh, the human being according to the tone of the muscle of the stomach. Um, the shape may be like that. The stomach descends vertically downward like the letter of J. J shape the stomach. Or the stomach may be horizontal, horizontal like the steer horn, it is called the steer horn stomach, which is transverse stomach. The stomach has two orifices, two borders, and two surfaces. First of all, the orifices. The upper gastric orifice is called cardiac orifice, while the lower gastric orifice is called pyloric orifice. This is the upper gastric opening which is cardiac opening or orifice and the lower gastric opening which is the pyloric orifice. First of all the upper gastric orifice which is called the cardiac orifice is present at the junction with the oesophagus. The cardiac orifice lies one inch to the left side of the middle line at the level of the left seventh costal cartilage, which is the same level of eleventh thoracic vertebra. It is about ten centimeter in the depth of the abdomen. 10 cm from the anterior abdominal wall and it is 40 cm from the incisors, one inch to the left side of the middle line, 40 cm from the incisors, 10 cm depth from the anterior abdominal wall at the level of the left seventh costal cartilage, which is the same level of the eleventh thoracic vertebra. Um, the cardiac orifice is a sphincter, allow passage of the food from above downward, from the oesophagus to the stomach only. But this sphincter, which is unidirectional sphincter, allow passage of food from above downward only, is controlled by a physiological sphincter. Depends upon many physiological factors to prevent regurgitation of food from below upward. All are physiological mechanisms. Here there is no anatomical sphincter. 
What is meant by anatomic sphincter? Anatomic sphincter in any site of the body means thickening of the circular muscle layer of the organ. Here, there is no thickening of circular muscle layer, therefore no anatomical sphincter, but it acts as a sphincter. Acts as sphincter, physiological sphincter. Depends upon many physiological factors. Um, what is uh, the relation of uh, the cardiac orifice? Posteriorly, it is related to this. What is this muscle? Posteriorly related to the diaphragm. Anterior related to what? To this. What is this organ? This is the liver. And what is this part of the liver? This is the left lobe of liver. Therefore, the cardiac orifice is related anteriorly to left lobe of liver and posteriorly to the diaphragm. On the other hand, compare the cardiac orifice with this orifice. This orifice is the lower gastric orifice, which is present at the junction between the stomach and the duodenum. This orifice is half to one inch to the right side of the middle line. And this is the bioloric orifice. There is a famous plane. There is a famous transverse plane passing with the bioloric sphincter. Therefore, this plane is sure the trans plane, which lies at the level of L1 vertebra. You should remember that the cardiac orifice is one inch to the left side of the middle line, while the pyroric orifice is one half to one inch to the right side of the middle line. The level of the Cardiac orifice left seven costal cartilage, while the level of the biloric orifice is trans biloric plane at the level of L1. Here, if you feel the gastric wall. Here, the gastric wall is markedly thickened. Here, there is thickening of circular muscle layer. Therefore, the pyloric orifice is controlled by pyloric sphincter, which is anatomical sphincter, which is formed of thickening of circular muscle layer. What is the relation of the biloric sphincter? The biloric orifice and the biloric sphincter is related anteriorly to what? Related to an area of the liver. Area of liver anteriorly called quadrate lobe of liver. And posteriorly, related to neck of pancreas and the pyroric sphincter is separated from neck of pancreas by the cavity of the lesser sac. What is this? Look for this uh, beautiful picture. This is a pyloric sphincter. And here the liver is retracted to see the stomach and the folds of peritoneum related. In this retracted liver, this area, which is 
quadrate in shape. Therefore, it is called the quadrate lobe of Heber. If you remove the retractors and let the lever to return to its normal side, this quadrate lobe of lever is related here to the sphincter. Therefore, anterior relation is quadrate lobe of lever. This area, which is limited by the gallbladder on the right side, and we will know very well uh, the boundaries of the quadrate loop when we study the liver together. Posteriorly, what is the relation of the biuretic sphincter? Posteriorly, there is This picture or this picture, posteriorly, this is the pancreas, and this is the neck of pancreas, just posterior to the pyloric sphincter. Behind the stomach, there is a cavity of uh, which is part of peritoneal cavity called the lesser sac. Here, the stomach is cut. We cut the peritoneal folds, this peritoneal fold, and we retract the stomach to see the cavity behind the stomach, which is called lesser sac, and to see the pancreas, and this area related to the pyloric sphincter is neck of pancreas. Also, the stomach, we cut the peritoneum. Retract the stomach to see this cavity behind the stomach, which is called lesser sac. And this is the pyloric sphincter related just posteriorly to the neck of pancreas with the cavity of the lesser sac separating between the pyloric sphincter and the neck of pancreas. During operation, we can identify the pyloric sphincter by what? We can diagnose the pyloric sphincter first of all by palpation, feeling. Feel the sickness of the gastric wall. Sure, at the pyloric sphincter, there is a maximum sickness of the gastric wall due to sickening of circular muscle layer. And this muscle layer, which is sick, is normally closed with intermittent opening to allow passage of food from the stomach to the urine. Therefore, normally this sickening of circular muscle layer is closed, leading to pyloric narrowing. This area is narrow area due to presence of the sphincter and the closure of the sphincter. On the outer surface of the stomach, there is a vein passing on the outer surface of the stomach called pre-pyloric vein, because it is in front of the pyloric sphincter, it's called the pre-pyloric vein. Therefore, the pyloric sphincter can be identified by feeling the sickness, seeing the narrowing, and the pre pyloric vein on the outer surface of the stomach. These are the two orifices, cardiac orifice and the pyloric orifice. Um, this uh, picture is also very beautiful. This is a pyloric sphincter related in front to quadrate lobe of liver and posteriorly to the neck of pancreas, separated from the neck of pancreas by this cavity, which is cavity of the lesser sac. <clears throat> in addition to the two orifices, cardiac and pyloric orifice, 
the stomach have two borders. The stomach has two borders. What are these borders? There is a right border. And there is a left border. And both borders are straight or have a curve. Both borders have a curve. Therefore, the right and the left borders of the stomach are called curvature. The right border is smaller. Therefore, the right border is called lesser curvature of the stomach. While the right border have a large curvature. Therefore, it is called greater curvature. The right border is lesser, and the left border is greater curvature. Um, the right border of the stomach. The right border of the stomach show a depression or notch. This depression or notch are called incisura angularis. Incisura means a notch. Or it is called angular notch. The same on the left side. The greater curvature show an angle. Show an angle between the oesophagus and the greater curvature. This angle is called incisura cardia because it's related to the cardia. Incisura means notch. Therefore, simply we can say that this area is cardiac notch. Therefore, there is angle on the left side, cardiac notch. And the angle here on the right side called the angular notch. The peritoneum related to each border. The stomach is covered with peritoneum from anterior and the posterior. The peritoneum covering the stomach from anterior and the posterior. And we can also imagine the stomach like that. Like that, this is the lesser curvature, this is the greater curvature, and the sum represent the abdominal part of the esophagus. Normally, the stomach is covered with peritoneum from anterior and the posterior like this paper from anterior and the posterior. The peritoneal covering of the stomach extends to the right side to form a fold of peritoneum called lesser omentum. Lesser omentum. And this fold of peritoneum is formed of two layers. The peritoneal covering anterior and the peritoneal covering the posterior to the stomach. Extend to the right side to form a fold of peritoneum formed of two layers called the lesser omen. The same occur on the other side. This is the lesser curvature. Which is attached, the fold of peritoneum attached to the lesser curvature of the stomach. The same occurs on the right side, on the left side. The peritoneal covering the stomach from anterior and the posterior extend upward and to the left and downward, forming three folds of peritoneum. The fold of peritoneum which extends from the greater curvature 
Abbott, who is a diaphragm. This is called the gastrophrenic ligament. Any ligament of peritoneum means it is formed of two folds of uh, two layers of peritoneum, extending the ligament extended between two structures. It extends from the greater curvature of the stomach to the diaphragm. This is called the gastro, means the stomach. Phrenic. Phrenic means diaphragm. Therefore, for the peritoneum between the stomach and diaphragm called gastrophrenic ligament. Also, the peritoneal covering the stomach from anterior and posterior extend to the left side. To form a fold of peritoneum between the greater curvature of the stomach and the spleen. This fold of peritoneum called the gastrospelenic ligament. From a stomach gastro to spleen, spleen, gastrospelenic ligament. The Peritoneal covering the stomach from anterior and posterior extend also inferiorly <coughs> to form the largest fold of peritoneum because it is the largest fold of peritoneum, it is called the greater omentum. What is the definition of omentum? Um, in the past, it is said that any fold of peritoneum related to stomach is called the omentum. Therefore, we take before the lesser omentum, greater omentum, <coughs> and gastrophrenic ligament is also called gastrophrenic omentum, and the gastrospelenic ligament is also called gastrospelenic omentum. Therefore, omentum is any fold of peritoneum related or attached to the stomach. And here, the lesser curvature, which is the right border, gives the attachment to lesser omentum, the smaller. And the greater curvature gives attachment to greater omentum, the largest, in addition to gastrophrenic omentum or ligament and gastrospelenic omentum or leg. Um, what are uh, the structures running along each border? Sure, on each border there are blood vessels passing along these borders. What are the blood vessels running on these borders? <coughs> Let us look for the drawing for blood supply. These are the vessels passing on the lesser curvature. On the lesser curvature, passing left gastric and the right gastric vessels. Right gastric and the left gastric. Sure, gastric means supplying the stomach because supplying the stomach called the gastric. On the greater curvature, three blood vessels. Three blood vessels passing. First of all, short blood vessels to the upper part of stomach. Many short blood vessels to the upper part of stomach because short vessels they are called short gastric vessels in addition to short gastric branch passing from left side and the branch pass from the right side the branch from left side is called left like left gastric passing from left to right and this is passing from left to right it's called left and the branch from right to left is called right Supplying the stomach, left and right, gastro, supplying the stomach. 
and these branches supplying also the fold of peritoneum below. What's the fold of peritoneum here below? The greater omentum. The blood vessels passing to the greater omentum is called epibiliac branches. Because these arteries supplying gastro and supplying epibiliac, this is called the left. Gastroepibliotic artery, left because it passes from left to right. Gastro supplying the stomach, epibliotic supplying the greater omentum. Therefore, it is called the left gastroepibliotic, and similarly, the other is called the right gastroepibliotic artery. Therefore, the left and right gastric related to lesser curvature. Why the greater curvature is related to short gastric, left and right gastroepibliotic vessels. Um, that's enough. We will continue in the next video. Thank you for good listening and good luck.